Hey guys, so this is a totally different video from other videos I've done in the past. Like the whole purpose behind me doing this, I love to make these videos because just talking about and getting my hands on different laptops and cell phones, you know, even different components like keyboards and mice, it just makes me happy. <laughs> I bet I bet you few that watch this channel feel the exact same way. Like if you were in my shoes, you would want to just play with as many different consumer electronics as you can. Now I focus pretty strictly on laptops and then PC peripherals and sometimes a bit of gaming too. But you know, in my in my age, I'm really starting to zone in on certain hobbies. And you know, one of those hobbies was called out by one of you who was watching a video and and notice I got these like pretty intense calluses on my hands. You know, my other big hobbies, I love to exercise, but that's not the kind of thing I'm gonna make a video about, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, there are people out there who are just like insane at fitness and know all the tricks and all the right things to do. And they're the people you should be listening to. But as far as laptops go, here's where I can set myself aside from like the really well-known tech tubers who are, I'm sure, very, very awesome people. They might know all like the computer science behind this stuff and the engineering, but I know how people buy stuff and I know how people sell stuff. My expertise is sales. I've been doing it my whole career. I teach it at the university over here. I've written books on sales and sales process. This is what I'm a master at. So when I get to put the two together, like this video, <laughs> it makes me especially happy. And I'm going to try to do more videos like this where it's less about like product review because there's a lot of product reviews out there, and more about consumer experience and buying experience. So let's go through that. All right, here's the setup, all right? You, if you're watching this channel, you might know that I praise the Razorbook 13. Razorbook 13 is a three pound, really nice clamshell laptop made out of aluminum. It's a lot like a MacBook, and it has a 13.4 inch 16 by 10 display it's effectively 1080p, 1200p. It's a really nice machine. It's got HDMI out, USB-A, USB-C, checks a lot of the boxes. Now, it had a really tight keyboard, but the first generation had an awful keyboard that was like not really usable. The second generation stealth launched. I was one of the few reviewers to review it and, and talk about this, um, but they fixed the keyboard. And they, it was tight, so not a super comfortable typing experience, but it worked, okay? But over you know several months of use, I felt that the screen was too small. So I wanted to find something with a bigger display and that got me on this journey. I was looking at MacBook Pro 14 inch and I was looking at 15 inch devices. This is the Galaxy Book 2 Pro. This is a 15.6 inch laptop with an OLED display that is incredibly thin and light. Uh, I don't wanna say it's thin and light to a fault, but it is super thin and light. It's also very, very fingerprinty. More so, I think, than a razor, bl razor book, razor blade, that's the one, the gaming ones. <laughs> I think it's really fingerprinty and it, it seems to really show dust, but it is an awesome device. Like the keys are super quiet and comfortable to type on. You do get a number pad as well, which I'm not a number pad warrior, but man, I do prefer using a number pad versus you know scanning left to right across the top of the keyboard. The trap back is, pad is large, it's comfortable to use, and like the overall build quality is solid. Now, it, it can be a little wobbly in the display because it is so thin and light, but you know what? It checks basically every box. There are a couple of problems though, and this got me further down the path as we'll describe. So, this has a battery life rating of 21 hours. Now, I'm not an idiot. I didn't expect 21 hours. I figured I could at least get 13 or 14 hours because you know what? This is Alder Lake. This is the 1260p. It's not a U processor, so it is sort of between the H and the U processor in terms of performance to efficiency. But I thought for sure we were going to get better performance out of this thing. Now, I don't hate this device at all. Like, if something... If someone told me I had to use this for two years, I'd be like, all right, no big deal. All right, it's a good machine. I can recommend it. It's super well-priced and it's Samsung. So there's gonna be deals and discounts everywhere. It also has solid IO. So you get a headphone jack, USB-A, you get a micro SD card slot. And then on the left-hand side, you get a full-size HDMI, Thunderbolt and a USB-C with power delivery. So it's a really solid device and performance has been super good. Like it really doesn't, clinch up mommy. I use the Microsoft Office Suite and I use the actual apps, not the online. So I'm Outlook Teams, 
Word, Excel, PowerPoint, a lot of PowerPoint. And uh, I also teach. So when I'm teaching, I take this thing, I plug it in over HDMI, which is why I like to have a native HDMI port versus a dongle. And I, you know, I connect it to a projector, sometimes two projectors. Don't worry, the university handles all the math there. And then bam, off I go. So for that workflow, it works really well with two caveats. The first is battery life. I started out getting very good battery life and I was losing like 7% an hour with these workflows, just running those apps, battery or sorry, um, display at a modest brightness and I was running in optimized and balanced modes. Uh, there's two separate modes because there's a Samsung app and a Windows app. And I just found that now that it's been a month, the battery is really not happy. It could be because the recent firmware update, although I, my research, I didn't see anything about that, but that really was unfortunate. So I started thinking, what else is out there? There's gotta be another device that I could plug into. It's going to get good battery life, check all those boxes like IO and have good portability Although I don't, you know, it doesn't have to be below three pounds, but like around three to four pounds. Four, I think, at the max, like a Dell XPS 15 just felt a little too big when I was carrying it around in the store. And I came back to the Mac. Now, this is not a video of like, hey, Joe's switching to, to Mac. I've been on Mac before. In fact, my wife uses a Mac. I had a MacBook 13. I really liked it, but there was a huge problem with the MacBook 13 for me. It wasn't battery life. It wasn't performance exactly. It was a very specific type of performance. Opening Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint files was dog slow, like six to 10 seconds. I've documented it on my channel. I've talked to the geniuses at Apple about it. They're stumped. I went through multiple devices. I tried an Air. I tried a Pro. Nobody could figure it out. It just seemed to be a problem that for some reason people aren't talking about. It might be a workflow thing that Mac users tend to open an application and leave it open in the background. And so that, that way, like if the application is loaded into background, when you load an app, it runs faster. But my Windows brain doesn't work that way, right? My Windows brain says, you click the X, you close the app, it's gone, right? And then you conserve some memory and then you go back and open the file or the app when you need to, no big deal. But uh, you know, Mac is different, right? Being Unix based, it handles memory or memory is used differently. And I'm just not used to that. So uh, with a little bit of research and uh, you know a fair bit of curiosity, I decided to pick up the MacBook Pro 14. Now this is not an apples to apples comparison. It's not even really a comparison. I just wanna talk about this whole use case that I think many of you can probably relate to and you know how, how I'm currently handling it. This is by no means, like I said, a switching to, to Mac video, switching to MacBook video, it's nothing like that. I'm just airing my thoughts. I'm just telling you guys what I've been thinking about that kind of led me here. And this is a path along a longer journey. Believe me, if Razer came out with a 14 inch or a 15 inch Razer book, even at two grand, I'd probably just return everything and go buy. Actually, I can't return this anymore. I'd sell the, the Galaxy book. I would return the MacBook and I would pick it up. Okay. So Checking boxes. Now, the MacBook Pro 14 is expensive. This particular model, this is the one terabyte 10 core model, so it's not the base model. This is $2,500. Now, I bought it open boxed at Best Buy for $2,145. So I didn't pay the full retail price. A big portion of the depreciation has now occurred and it wasn't at my expense. Macs do tend to retain a higher level of value than Windows-based machines. Uh, really from any other manufacturer, including Razer. So that's in my favor. There's a full-size uh, full SD card slot, a USB-C port, and then a full-size HDMI. On the other side, you have the new, well, not new, not kind of, an updated MagSafe, and then two more Thunderbolt ports and a headphone jack. And then, of course, you have the device itself. It feels like a million dollars. This is a very substantial and you know, uh, comparatively heavy device. I believe it's three and a half pounds, somewhere in that realm. Whereas this Galaxy Book 2 Pro is only two and a half pounds. And this is also razor thin. This is MacBook Air thinness, right? But not MacBook Air quality. It's a little bit more flimsy. And being as thin as it is though, one of the really cool things about it, it it's, it's so surprisingly thin, it kind of feels like a toy, right? But on the other hand, 
you can lug around a 15 inch, like a true 15.6 inch, 16 by nine aspect ratio laptop and barely notice it. So everything else in its class at 15 inches, with the exception of the Surface Laptop 4 15 inch, has a discrete GPU. You can get this with an ARC GPU from Intel. I don't know the pricing because I'm not interested. But yeah, every other 15 inch, you're going to have to get a dedicated or a discrete GPU. Maybe those LG Grams don't have them, but I think those come in 14 and 16s, not 15. So anyway, like a Dell XPS 15, you get the power of an RTX 3050 or a 3050 Ti, but you're, you're going to pay for that uh, both in the wallet and bank account as well as in the power consumption department. Whereas the MacBook runs way more efficiently, and that's very well known at this point. I'm not going to break, you know, break that all down. But um, what I found really great about the MacBook so far is that battery life. Now, you can argue that it took a few weeks for the battery life to get crappy, or maybe it was a firmware update on the Galaxy Book, and that's just moments away. Like, it's a ticking time bomb. The same will happen for me here at the MacBook. But I don't think that's going to happen, and that's because... These have been out for a long time now, longer than the Galaxy Book 2 Pro, longer than the Alder Lake processor, and I've experienced the M1 processor, not the Pro, but the M1 in the MacBook Pro 13 and in the MacBook Air. And to this day, my wife's MacBook Air has very good battery life. So that's where I'm at right now. I would prefer to stick with Windows. My mind and my muscle memory is wrapped around Windows. But I'm not full, I don't hate Mac OS. I used to hate Mac OS. Some things don't make sense. Like why is it when I'm in the finder, you know, looking at files and I press enter, why does it want to rename the file? Why won't it open it? Don't most people want to open a file when they click on it versus rename it? How often do you rename files? It's got to be a, a what, 500 to one. Like you, you open for every 500 times you've opened files, you rename one file. Yet a primary key, enter, is used to rename the file. Like that stuff makes no sense to me. But if I can get my head around Mac OS, then I might be in a more efficient position uh, with the battery and check all those boxes I was looking for. Now there is, of course, the ecosystem problem. I was on iPhone with the AirPods and all the, the iPad. Like I tried, I was super nerded out. I tried it for, I don't know, maybe seven or eight months until recently when I went back to the Razorbook 13. And I wouldn't have gone back to the Razorbook 13 if they didn't fix the keyboard. Well, I'm currently running the, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic, which is a, it's the best smartwatch I've ever had. And I don't use smartwatches for very much. I just use text messaging, notifications, a little bit of fitness, but you know, mostly I, you know, I like to get the notifications on my watch. Um, I like it better than the Apple Watch 6 or whatever one I had. Now, on the other hand, there's the phone problem. I really do not want to go back to the iPhone. And I don't feel forced into it yet in the few days that I've been back to the Mac. If anything, I feel like this nice clean distinction between like what I do most of the day, which is on my desktop, which is Windows based, and then you know out and about on my phone. But when I'm chilling and I'm doing like my morning work with my cup of coffee or my evening work, here and like this is the family area, you're just seeing a portion of it versus my office. I fire up the MacBook and I don't have that intrusion on my wrist or in front of my face of all my notifications and my apps and text messages. Like that's in my pocket, it's sort of tucked away and I don't have to deal with it, you know, on right in front of me on my PC. Now that might just be a defense mechanism. We'll see <laughs> what reality holds. But for now, I want to just talk to you guys a little bit, like bring this up in a communal way, right? Like we're a community here. You know, I don't have 30 million followers because I, I don't cover a broad, how do I put this? I think we're all, I think the people who have found my channel, so those of you, if this is not your first video with me, then you probably relate to a lot of this type of stuff that I cover. You understand like me that Tech can be fun, it can be personal. Of course, they're all tools at the end of the day and we don't wanna waste our money, but if we have additional money to spend, people like us, this is where we spend that money, right? And that's one of the things that I haven't talked about yet is the cost of the, of the Galaxy Book 2 Pro in this video. So 2,500 for this, there's a $2,000 base model that was recently on sale for 1750, the MacBook Pro 14, which would have suited my purposes, but the storage is only 512 and it's soldered. Whereas on the Galaxy Book 2 Pro, there are two NVMe bays, and one is empty right out of the bat. 
Now this ships with 512, but you can replace that or you can slide in another, you know, two terabytes, for example, or four terabytes into that second drive. So um, anyhow, the cost of this is 1350. And then you can add the Galaxy Book 2 Pro. And then you can add those additional drives. Maybe you spend another $200 for another terabyte or something. So you're in it $1,500 bucks versus you know, $2,500 if you spent full retail on the MacBook Pro 14 one terabyte model. So you know, it's not as though they're price competitive because they're clearly not. But the thing about the Galaxy Book is it doesn't it doesn't even feel like 1300 bucks, right? It is, it's so impressive how thin and light this thing is. It's super duper impressive, but it feels like a toy, right? So if you want something ultra premium, you probably don't want the Galaxy Book 2 Pro, you know, given that it's a little bit wobbly, it's very fingerprinty, and the screen's only 1080p, which is kind of a problem. So you don't get like the high resolution that you would see in something like the MacBook or, or even that razor blade at 13 inches plus 1200p, the PPI was much denser. So anyhow, I think that's, that's a consideration. So if you're like me and you, you have, this is your hobby and you want to spend a little, you're like totally cool with it. I will spend 30% more to get something that just feels awesome. It feels really premium. Right now, in my journey of trying to find a laptop like that, it's the MacBook Pro 14. Now, I have a month to return this. Really awesome return policy at Best Buy. So I'll keep you guys posted, and you'll, of course, get more bits of this journey that I'm on. And hopefully, now that we're at the end of April time of recording, we'll start to get more Alder Lake CPUs that are for the thin and lights. And I haven't seen anything yet with the U-series CPUs. So... Alder Lake is going to have performance level. It's going to have a mid-range, which is this one here, the P, and it's going to have a more of efficient U series. So once we start to get those, we'll see if it can handle what I consider a pretty basic workload, right? The, the whole office suite with a browser. To me, that is basic, and laptops that are competing with a 13-inch M1 Pro from Apple, they should be getting 12-plus hours of battery versus what I'm down to now, which is like six to seven hours. It's just plummeted. So anyhow, I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. I'd love to turn this into a conversation. So leave comments here. Go to the Locals community, and it's all free. You can leave comments there, and we'll make this a dialogue. Thanks, folks. Cheers.